Surprise! There's another Mercury video. I know you guys didn't think you'd ever see another video on this car, but there's one more. So, there is good news. The car was sold. It's going up to a guy named Kevin in Indiana. Uh, his favorite part about it was how rust-free it was compared to anything in Indiana that's been around for 60 years. So, before that happens, I have to put the new radiator in it, and that's what we're going to show today. So, as you guys saw in the video beforehand, it had the factory radiator in it, but it leaked, and it leaked a lot. So, it wasn't, you couldn't really drive it around much with that being said. So, I got a radiator from Auto City Classic, and we're going to put it in today. And fingers crossed, it fits like it should. <laughs> so, here's the old one. And here is the new one. So I originally bought a radiator on eBay that was supposed to fit and it didn't fit at all. And so I did some research and I found out the stuff from Auto City Classic is the best stuff you can get because they don't make, they really don't make reproductions, one of those that are 100% authentic. So um, yeah, it looks way better than the old one. The only thing, the only differences I really notice is the core is a little bit smaller, but that's okay because it's aluminum. So it should cool a little bit better. I had them custom make extra wide fins and so that this radiator length from side to side is the same as that one side to side. I have to cut my own holes, but that's not a problem. Uh, one thing I do like about these radiators is they come with the Ford style top tank. Whereas the other aluminum radiator that I got was just a square tank and it actually looked kind of ugly. Um, the, also the fittings for the transmission weren't fitting. And um, it looks like I'm going to have to, you know, use an extra, a little bit extra rubber line to get those to work, but it's going to be no big deal. Um, the hoses look good. The outlets and the inlets look good. This one looks like it got bent a little bit, but that's okay. This one might be a little smaller than, than that one, but we'll see uh, when we get to that. Uh, if worth comes to worth, I just have that, a new top hose, which isn't a problem. So yeah, other than that, we should be good. And I'm gonna start by laying this radiator on top of the other radiator and marking holes so that we can uh, get it installed in the car and go from there. Looks like test fit number one is a success. Um, the lower neck's the same size, the top neck I think is too small. So I'm gonna have to figure out something with this hose. I might just require getting another flex hose that's a little bit smaller. Uh, I might have one that I can use um, in my parts, uh, Kevin who bought it I believe is going to put a whole different drivetrain in it so at this point we'll just get it so they can go on the tr car transporter but you know the holes seem like they line up fairly decently. I'm going to put bolts in it now and then we will go from there. I have to run to the store to get new fittings for the transmission cooler lines but other than that it's a pretty good fit. I'm not, I'm pretty happy with the uh, Auto City Classic and what they got me so. After a quick trip to O'Reilly's, I got a couple extra things. So I got a different upper radiator hose for two reasons. One, this radiator hose that I had on it, it would leak with this size of hose on a bigger neck. So obviously it's not going to work on that at all. And two, I tried to make a, a hose out of this one, but it just kinked so much that I didn't like it. This one has a spring inside of it, so it doesn't kink as much and it'll still work just fine. Uh, the extra cooling from the aluminum will probably make up for the difference. Uh, the other thing I got were these little ends for the uh, transmission cooler lines and then a piece of hose. Put that all together, fill it up full of water, and we should be good to go. <clears throat> Here are the old transmission cooler lines. As you can see, the clamps and the hose are all from 1959, so I figured change them out. The only difference is the inlets for the transmission cooler are in different spots than the old ones. So, for example, this one, the line's here, and then it was supposed to go straight in, but the port's now over there. So I added some hose right there, a little bit extra, so there wasn't any kinks in it. It'll work just as fine. And then the other side's kind of the same way. It goes a little bit to the left. But, I mean, honestly, an aftermarket radiator, you're going to have to, you know, deal with this type of thing. That's just how they are. So, all right, next is uh, I have a couple more fuel filters and I plan on uh, putting more gas in it and then putting water in it and starting it up. All right, we got water. We got oil, we got gas. Let's connect 
battery and see what happens. After sitting for quite a while, it fires right up. I'm pretty happy. Runs pretty decent. The exhaust leak is still there, and I also need to include the hanger. But it's not smoking. Even after sitting a long time, it's not smoking. It's running really, really well. So I'm definitely happy about that. You hear that little squeak from the exhaust. Most of this noise you hear is from this exhaust. See what happens when we open the choke. Alright guys, it's like three hours later, but finally I got the Mercury to run way better than it was. So the issue I was having was when it was hot, it just wouldn't start, it wouldn't idle, it was just garbage. But I'll show you what I did. You guys remember the Ford pickup truck projects that I had in the past? I got a couple carburetors with them and this was one of them that came with it. And I opened it up and it looked really, really good inside. And so I had to do a few little modifications to get it to fit. Uh, sadly, I had to cut the fuel line, the vacuum advance line, and then I had to change this up just a little bit. But honest truth, it works great. So I'm idling a little high. Um, I still need to set the idle for it. But right now, I'll show you. But right now, it's pretty warm. It's not totally at temperature because it's been sitting for a little while. But so you can turn it off, let it sit for a little bit. It just starts right up. It sounds a lot better than the other carburetor did. And I think I'll show you the reason. So this is what you call varnish. It's just the sticky stuff that gas turns into whenever it gets uh, left in a car for a long time. So the problem I think I was having was A, when I cleaned this out, I didn't clean it out good enough. But B, I let it sit for too long and the, the gas inside of it turned to varnish, I think. But this carburetor is running much, 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 much nicer than the old one. And as you can see, I've turned the car around since last time you saw it. That's what I used to, you know, I drove around with the uh, um, old carburetor and it was just having issues. So I'm not going to charge Kevin anymore for this. This I already had it on the shelf. It didn't take me too long. But yeah, the Mercury is running awesome and it's ready to go. All right, before it gets too hot with the new carburetor, I want to drive it around. Even just in the backyard, that's what we're gonna do. So right now I got the car in neutral because the neutral safety switch needs adjusted, but so it starts up. Oh, my turn signal's on. Temperature's right in the middle. Oh, it's hard to drive this car with one hand. Suspension. Suspension bumps. There's chopstick running with the car. Oh, it runs so much better. It runs so much better with the carburetor. Move, flopper! You're gonna get run over. You dummy, what are you doing? Let's see if I can make this turn stuff in the back making noise. A little 
big boat. Alright, I think it's good enough to make it onto the uh Oh that's some big bumps. Oh 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 I think it's good enough to make it onto the shipper, onto the car carrier. Alright, before this Mercury leaves, I want to basically give an inventory of all the parts that I have for it that are going with it. Uh, this is a gasket for transmission pan. There's the book. In here we have part of the air breather. We have some hubcaps. We have trim for the window, trim for the seats, um, an extra generator, which it will need um, because the generator is not charging. And then I have an extra window over there on that side of the seat. And then here are basically all the used parts that I pulled off of it. Um, there's the old carburetor, an extra brake booster and master cylinder, uh, the old starter, I mean all the the old stuff that on the ignition system that I pulled out, I mean radiator stuff, water pump, master cylinder, it's all in here. So he'll get all that with it and then of course a spare tire with a spare drum. So definitely good for him if he wants to uh, keep it all original or whatever he wants to do with it I don't know but all that stuff's gonna be in there for him and of course the last finishing touch before it goes in the car hauler a sticker so this was requested by the uh, guy who bought it but when you're driving down the road that's what you'll see right in the middle it's kinda small considering how big the rest of the car is but next it's ready to get picked up